But no, thanks for sharing that. Other questions? Anything more for us related? Except for my kids? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, they weren't, but I do have three cats. <laughs> my cats are Marilyn, Charlotte, and I just forgot the other one. Uh, Stella. <laughs> oh, they're talking about Stella. <laughs> we have people named cats. Yes? So you can have multiple sticky posts and then adjust them by the, the date to order them? It, yes, but it's also dependent on your date. So some things will support that some won't, in my experience. I, in my WordPress, I'm from Rochester, New York. In my WordPress meetup, people will always ask me questions about anything, and my first answer is always, it depends. <laughs> because in WordPress, a lot of things depend on your plugins, and a lot of things depend on your um, theme, and a lot of things depend on when the last time you got any of that was, or up, and then updated it. So, the other thing, and th I would be remiss if I didn't mention this in a group full of WordPressers, never ever make huge changes to your site without backing up first. So if you haven't invested in a good backup program, I, I you know, urge you to do that because that has saved me more than once um, to be able to back up and then restore a site. Yes. What are some of your favorite themes? Oh, okay, well my, some of my favorite themes are, are paid themes. Um, I have, uh, when I first got involved in working with WordPress, I invested in a lifetime membership to Elegant Themes, and it has just elegant, elegant Themes. And I, I, I know this, people will be on one side of the room or the other based on this, but I love Divi, and that's what I use a lot. Yeah. That's not what my blog is, I don't know, because when I built my, I, I have a blog, it hasn't been blogged on in a while because life gets busy, but I have a blog called WP Fanatic. And with WP Fanatic, I tried to use things that were all out of the repository so that anybody who's looking at WP Fanatic will be able to use the same things that I use without having to spend any money. So, I don't remember what that theme was, though. <laughs> Thanks. You're okay. <laughs> it's there. You can always run it through uh, what WP theme was that, and you'll find it. <laughs> sure. Other questions? Thanks for laughing at all my jokes today. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate it. You feel a lot better as a speaker. <laughs> yes. And also, I just did it. It also captured. You go on the website and it's not there. You can capture it right there. Screenshot. Yeah. Captured right there. From the archive.org. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a fun little tool, for sure. It's not a hidden feature of WordPress. It is kind of a lesser known feature of the internet. It's kind of like the museum of the internet. Think about it. Yes. I was just going to say, I use this all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's a desire to like in the first three sometimes if you really need to go back and capture some stuff. That's cool. And you really write like go to Coca-Cola.org and then look at their stuff or Coca.com and go back and look at their stuff and see how they evolved over the years. So it's really kind of neat to be able to see. It's not just it's not just you. You can look at anything. So. Yeah. Anybody else? Can I ask you how you do your workflow? I'm very new to WordPress, but what do you use? Yeah. So, so there's a couple that I recommend, and some are paid and some are not. Um, I know a lot of people only use that I recommend Updraft Plus. It's free, it's in the repository. Updraft Plus. I also use Duplicator, which is also in the repository and it's free. And then uh, I, as a paid uh, program, I use Backup Buddy. But I have used all three depending on the site and what the client's needs were. You're welcome. What was yes. the last one you just said? Backup buddy. Yes. You said you may change your names Right. Right, because mostly for logging, you want to give somebody editor privileges. So I have two logins to my own blog site so that the name that shows up as the blog um, author can't be as easily hacked, right? So I don't want to use an admin name as my uh, blog author. I don't want it to be. I don't want to give anybody extra information to try to hack into my site using a username. And so what I do is I change. I have the blog editor is a, is one login with one email address and username, and then I use something different for my admin user. Thanks. Yes. So with that, because I'm on with that because when we first started. We have the admin as the author. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, creating a new um, <coughs> sign in as a writer, as just a contributor, and then changing all of the options. Yeah, and you can do that through quick edit and do it all at once. Do all at once with just someone that's a contributor.
Yeah, so that's a great way to kind of at least, you know, throw a little bit of a veil in between the yeah, user and Kevin. Yeah, just to uh, extend on that a little bit, in the WordPress REST API, there's a user's endpoint, and it'll expose uh, any users in a public post, which is another great reason to create a author role. Because um, if your admin is published in post, then that user will be listed in that user endpoint. So. Right. So it's just another way to kind of throw this on top a little bit and create some barriers. Yes. Did you have to learn to find your vendor? It depends on how big the site is. Sometimes you can run into issues. But if you run into issues, that's usually something that has to do with your host and uh, your server. So if you contact your host and ask them about that, they can usually change some settings and give you a little bit more uh, ability to back up your site. Other questions? Well, because I'm backing up about 200 sites, I pay for a service that'll do that for me. And I don't have to do it manually. <laughs> so that's why I do that. And it's the first one I was introduced to, and I've been using it for years. So, but it's really up to you. It really depends on the user. I know people who are developers and designers who never pay for that service. They use one of some other free plugins. It really is your preference. Yes. To piggyback on that to answer, because I like using both. Because certain web hosts just they don't pay certain plugins. Mm -hmm. and they just don't, or if something has your backup buddy go, then yeah, up plus is a really good one. Yeah. I, I think you, you can pay to migrate it. Really, uh, I think so too. Yeah. And and I I'm not sure I think that updraft plus has it's a premium model, right? I think that they have a paid version as well, so does duplicator. So you get um, if you if you upgrade to either one of those, you get additional functionality. Do you use security? Uh, like, did you pay for site lock at all? I don't secure any of my sites. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 <Gotcha>. <laughs> I use a couple different security plugins. Um, I can't remember those names of them off the top of my head right now. Um, but if you uh, if you tweet me later, I'll be happy to share some of those. Or if you go to my favorite in in uh, WordPress.org, you'll see the ones that I favorited. Um, I switched over recently from what I was using to a new one. It seems to be working better for me. Um, but this is on WordPress TV, so I'm not sure I'm going to start saying all these names and saying what works and doesn't. Um, but yeah, if you tweet me later, I'd be happy to uh, to share with you some of my favorite plugins for different things. I have not paid for any services yet. The free ones have done what I needed them to do so far. Yes. I think some of the security plugins, depending on the host, you click, right? So you kind of have to take a security plugin based on what the host. I, I haven't found that to be a conflict for myself yet, but I understand that other people have. Okay. Yeah. So it, it, it's always good to know what, what your host does or doesn't do and you know, what the benefits are, so for sure. Other questions? What's WordPress TV? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Okay, WordPress.tv. It's a it's actually a URL. And WordCamps all over the world videotape our presentations and they post them on WordPress.tv. So if you want to see other iterations of this talk I've given on the East Coast, you can search me in WordPress TV. If you want to see some of my other talks, you can see them there too. If you're interested in any specific topic, you can pull it up on there if you're interested in memberships. Uh, membership pages, things like that. People have given talks about all those different things. And you can watch the 45 minute talks on WordPress.tv. Oh. There's a commercial for WordPress TV right there. <laughs> yes. Another you are, you can ask many questions until they get us out the room. <laughs> How do you know if somebody's trying to hack your site? Well, that's a great question. So there's a couple ways you can know if somebody's trying to hack your site. Number one, your site goes down. Right? That's the answer. Number two, your host may contact you and tell you that you're under attack. Okay, because it's hitting their resources too and they want you to fix it as quickly as possible. Uh, number three, the security plugin that you put in should have notified you before anything, anybody, any, either of those other things happen. Okay. So if you're using um, like WordFence or the other one, I can't remember the other, any of those, you should be getting emails from them telling you that there's a problem. And the, the, if they're a really good plugin too, they'll, like WordFence will tell you that you have a plugin that are out of date, these that are out of date or it's time to update your WordPress core. Because all of those things can present an issue as far as security, and they want to make sure that you're as secure as possible. Thank you. You're welcome. I want to second WordFence. Uh, I've run about 20 sites, and uh, the username point. So I got I started getting notifications from China and Eastern Europe, 
about users trying to log in, and log in and being logged out, but there was no such user. So it's really interesting how they just use like a domain name and just guess that that's a user name. Yeah. And then solve it like yeah. just bots. So you really cautious about what you're using as your username. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But big, big ups for word tests. Really and there, you know, and I'm glad you mentioned that too because I had, so I had a site for, I had, there's a dentist's office in my hometown who contacted me because they thought I was the local WordPress expert. I mean, I do a lot with WordPress. I never consider myself an expert at anything. They called me because their site got hacked. And they wanted to know how to fix it. And so they paid me to go in and fix their site, and, which I did. I got it unhacked, or however you want to call that phrase. But they were getting attacked by um, IP addresses in Turkey and Russia. Well, guess what? Nobody in Turkey and Russia is going to come to the dentist's office in Hilton, New York. <laughs> so there are actually plugins where you can restrict um, access to your site based on country. And so I blocked anything except um, the United States because nobody outside of the United States is going to come to this dentist office. Now, if you're using, if you're doing international commerce, if you're, you're never going to want to do that if you're actually hoping that people from other parts of the world visit your site. But if you're a local mom and pop type business, then that's something that can really help, and that can kind of it's a shield that just deflects those kinds of things. You said something about um, uh, being careful with your usernames. Yes. So. You want to make a username that's not easy to um, to guess, right? So, like, if you are like my website when I had a freelance company was marketed by Michelle. Guess what they tried to sign, to sign in on my website? Sorry, it was Michelle, right? Because they know that's my name. So, guess what my username for marketed by Michelle isn't Michelle. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I mean, there have been times I spell somebody's name backwards to give them an original, like a username, yeah. that kind of thing, because it's not as easy to guess. Character in a book. Yeah. yeah, anything that makes sense to you, add some numbers into it. Exactly. So that it's not as easy to guess the username. Because uh, if they have your username, they have half of your login. Right. And you don't want them to have any of your login. So, we have just a couple minutes left if there's any more questions. You guys have been awesome. I really appreciate it. Um, I will definitely tell people in Rochester the same thing as Austin. They're the best people, and they should appreciate me more. <laughs>